What's up guys? I'm super happy today and the reason for that is that today I am finally presenting you guys with the Reptiliatus Reptile Room Tour for June 2017. I hope you guys are going to enjoy this video. It took a while to film all these animals but I'm really happy I did it to show you all. So without further ado, let's get started on my room tour. why all my fans are in these little deli cups is because while I do my cleaning and maintenance I actually place them in small containers to make sure that I'm not scraping them wiping them with the paper towel they kind of get in the way and I want to keep their safety a priority what I decided to do to take advantage of the room tour is keep them in their cup so I can take them out and film them as I place them back in the enclosures for the room tour to show you all my breeder fantasticus We'll do the fans last as the grand finale. So for now, let's start with Tokyo geckos and Pyridura picta or Madagascar panther geckos. Alright guys, so these are my panther geckos. I'm going to take the female's enclosure here and move it up and I'll put the males next to it as well. So these guys are super easy to keep. They just have the heat cord there under them to give them the nice warmth they need but their setups are fairly straightforward and easy uh, they have a live plant some English ivy a shelter a clean water dish and a hide so this is my females enclosure she lives in here I'll show her to you here so there she is Again, this is the Pyridura picta, Madagascar ground gecko or panther gecko. Uh, I'll give her a little something to eat to show you guys. They have a really great appetite. Here you go, girl. Nice little super worm. And this female has given me several young. So, yeah, she's a really, she's a really great animal. Hey, you. Let me show her a bit better to you there. Really, really underrated gecko species, frankly speaking. I would say they're really fun to keep. They're affordable. They're not um, hard to keep. Uh, they're quite personable and really easy going. They have a great temperament. So, yeah. Definitely an awesome species. I'll put her hide back and we'll move on to my male. So yeah, that's him. Uh, he doesn't actually like super worms, oddly enough. Or he does, but he's not as big of a fan as the female is. He really likes his cricket, so we'll kind of just leave him be here. But yeah, one more look at him. He. Those are my panther geckos. I'll do a care video and I'm probably going to be mating them soon. So I'll definitely do a mating video too for those of you that are interested in seeing that. Next up on the list are some pretty shy animals I own. And these are my two Tokyo Gecko pairs. Now you guys are probably thinking that their enclosures are rather plain and not and unexciting. I couldn't agree more. Compared to all the other animals I keep, my Tokyo geckos have it pretty rough by means of their enclosure decor. And that is all going to change. I haven't really mentioned to you guys, but I'm actually on the hunt for a small commercial space. And once I've done that, I'm going to be really pimping out the tanks for these guys, upgrading them and whatnot. So. That's sort of why it's on the back burner. I don't want to set these tanks up super nice when I'm planning to probably upgrade them all together. Oh, I see my reflection. Hey, guys. 
Uh, but yeah, for now, I will quickly show you my tokes if I can get a better view of them. Uh, here is one enclosure. You know, the basics are there. They have their wood to hide behind. Vertically along the sides on the inside here, there's heat cord running the walls and they sleep along the walls and get their warmth that way. So we'll go in here and take a look at the tokes. All right, so I moved the wood so you guys can get a better look at these tokes. However, it's still very dark in here and you can hardly see them. The male is over top of the female. Um, yeah, that's a really bad angle, but it kind of gives you the gist. They were a um, wild caught couple. One of them was a rough shaped wild caught female I acquired and the male I rescued, but literally the uh, previous, oh, there goes one of them. The previous owner uh, really didn't know what they were doing and had him in a little cup and he was like emaciated. Lo and behold, here he is. He has a beautiful partner up there that you can't really see. And uh, yeah, they're gonna get a really nice tank soon as I mentioned. In this enclosure are my two fairly large tokes. Um, Tiki is the male. I raised him from the size of my pinky finger, captive bred. My female there is a wild caught rescue. Again, she was a bit thin and I got her. She's doing fantastic now. But I don't really wanna disturb these guys. I'll probably do a feeding video and that's when you'll see them. They're very active and they'll come out of the tank even to come take food from tongs. But uh, yeah, they're chilling in here. They have all their wood, water dish down there. And yeah, they're doing great. Over here we have a rack that holds, as you saw previously, my panther geckos. They're young. And some feeders, like crickets and such. Up here we have some juvenile grow outs for you fantasticus, the satanic leaf tail geckos, it'll be future breeders. And up here we have some young juvenile henkels, leaf tail geckos and a few rows of baby satanic leaf tails. So I'll quickly show you guys here. This is how I raise the fans. Um, fairly straightforward. It's a small cup container. Ventilation in the top. Um, I drill holes along the bottom for cross ventilation as well. You can see that. And uh, we have a thin layer of soil and a, a larger um, area of sphagnum moss. And that's one of the babies there on the fence. He's probably like, uh, why'd you wake me up? But yeah, I'll show these guys in more detail at some point. All right, let's go check out Jabba and Leela down here. So they are my Lichianus geckos, who you would have seen in my most recent video. So, here is Leela. She's just sleeping up against the glass here. And Jabs is probably back here. I figure. Yep, there he is, schnoozing. Hey, Jabba. Hey, buddy. Yeah, so my Lichianus are fantastic animals. Really happy with them. They're some of my true pets, if you will. I love all my animals dearly. Um, some re some receive sort of, how do I say, the respect of being treated as wild animals. Obviously, Lichianus aren't really like pet pets, and I don't handle them much either. But, I mean, compared to all my Europlatus that I hardly ever handle, uh, my Lichianus once in a while I get to handle and I enjoy making them food and such like smoothies and whatnot. So between all my reptiles that I keep, most being advanced species, um, the Lichianus are sort of the closest thing to being like my pets, if you will. So there they are. Now I'll go back over to my desk here and show you guys a few of my... Uh, remaining offspring Lichianus that I kept back from last season. So they're rather easy to house when they're this young. These are only a few months old and they don't grow very quickly actually. So what we have in here is a simple water dish that's constantly there and every other day or so I have another deli cup I'll put in on the side here with Pangea mix which is a 
meal replacement diet or some smoothie or a few crickets or something like that. And here's the baby. This is a baby Lichianus that hatched out in the middle of December of last year. So they don't grow super fast as you can see. And this one's really nice. I, uh, oops. I really like this animal. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's got some really nice markings coming in, which is really cool. Oh, I might jump in a sec. But yeah, it's a bit of minimal handling. They seem to be very tolerant of it. Yep, I called that. And so yeah, that's one of them. Here we have the second baby, who is probably hiding. There you are, under the cork. This one is pretty nice too, has some really cool markings. Hey little baby. Check out this one. This is a really nice lychee. Really cool uh, white collar almost developing on this animal. I've never seen that on a lychianus, but I find that with every shed it seems to be intensifying. So we'll see how this baby develops. It's probably going to end up being a hold back for the next while, but Nonetheless, stunning little animal. So I'll let it go back to sleep until this evening when it'll wake up and go do its thing, walk around, and then tomorrow will be Pangea Day to get fed. I used to give my lychees food every single day, but I found it just kind of went to waste. They really don't eat that often, especially not the babies. Like, at best, they'll eat maybe every other day. Honestly, even every third day, I find if I'm feeding them that often, they just actually finish their food, which is nice. Um, so, yeah. Over here, uh, viewer discretion. If you are afraid of arachnids, Oh hey there, how's it going? I didn't do anything. So if you're afraid of spiders, perhaps you'll want to skip ahead of this part. This is the last remaining tarantula I own. Her name is Afro and she is a Honduran curly haired tarantula, otherwise scientifically known as Brachypelma albopilosum. I produced her myself four years ago and I kept one sling back and oddly enough, she really wouldn't grow. I don't know if she was like stunted or whatever, but she really grew so slowly. Like this is a four year old spider and she's only that big. So finally I noticed that she sort of has like gotten over her uh, stunted growth, you could say, and has been making some great progress. So we'll go ahead and feed her here and you guys can watch her eat. Here you go, girl. And this is a really great beginner species of spider to keep, by the way. Um, they're very calm. Sometimes they can be a bit of hair kickers, but the whole genus is sort of notorious for that. They're actually relatively handleable, although I don't ever really recommend handling tarantulas. That's just my opinion. I'm not saying it can't be done, but I, I appreciate the animals the way they they are in their enclosure and I don't really feel the need to uh, handle them. All right, so I know a lot of you really like my Europlatus geckos. So this is probably going to be what some people consider one of the more exciting portions of the tour. This is one of my Europlatus Henkeli tanks. Uh, this enclosure houses two males. I custom made the background. These are branches of uh, maple in here, vertical branches that are uh, as I just said, oriented vertically. And in here you can see two male specimens cohabitating together. Um, there's one here, sleeping on the log. You see him there. And the second male is back there. Let me see if I can get a better shot for you guys. So there you go, I'm inside the enclosure now. Um, trying to get a better shot. There you can see that other male perched sleeping. And they really have incredible camouflage as you can see. Um, for lighting they have a sun blaster light here. 
and a uh, 5.0 UVB bulb on the other side. Here we have a pair of Europlatus Henkeli. There is a larger female in this enclosure. I'm going to see if I can gently coax her. Nope, she's not having it, not interested. If I can gently handle her. No, she's not in the mood. Here is my male, one of the males. Uh, he jumped off the log, he's looking pretty pissed off. So I think we're just gonna leave him alone. The female is running up the wall here. Stunning, stunning animal. Regenerated tail, as you can see. Um, but there she is. She's also a bit stressed because of me coming into the tank. So maybe we'll leave them alone now. Um, but that's their enclosure. They have plenty of leaf litter down at the bottom there for the female to go in and burrow her eggs or not bury them really but she just sort of goes under the leaf litter and lays them half in the soil all right and below here next to jabal nila's enclosure is another one of my female geoplatus henkelis you can see the white mark on this log is actually a, a dud egg that she laid and i tried to remove it's really hard to get the calcium off um here let's see if i can gently get her to come a bit more to the forefront of the enclosure there she is a very beautiful animal here and the henkelis have this incredible phenotypic diversity that you see in a lot of the fimbriatus group members of the genus so you have Europlatus sicore the Europlatus samedi Europlatus henkeli, Europlatus fimbriatus. They have a lot of interesting diversity. And I'm going to show you that in a moment when we move along here to the left. So here is another female, Europlatus henkeli. Um, she sort of had a bit of a calcium crash, so she most certainly will not be breeding this year. Here she has a water dish with some liquid calcium in it. She's made a huge comeback and she's been eating a lot of snails, which is great. Europlatus females will actually readily accept and consume snails as a large source of protein and calcium while breeding. So offering them a few snails is really good for them when they're producing eggs. Obviously you need to captive breed them because snails can carry lots of parasites, but if you can find some tiny snails or sometimes they're for sale, I got fortunate someone I knew had a bit of an infestation of these tiny little soft shelled snails in their dart frog enclosure. So I asked her for them and I've been raising them and breeding them to use as feeders for my Europlatus. Anyways, this was sort of the phenotypic diversity I wanted to show you that I mentioned before. And uh, this is also a Europlatus henkeli that I produced last year. And I'm really excited about her breeding in the coming season. Uh, we call this a pied or um, white-shouldered henkeli. And this girl is just stunning. I'm really excited to pair her up. These guys are also hopefully getting an upgrade for their enclosures. When I make the move, I really do want to be keeping all my Europlatus henkeli in much larger enclosures. This sort of suffices, but I really want to see them in an enclosure twice the height and twice the width. So really like 36 long by probably 46 high at least for per pair if I can. Um, you know, I have read online that these 18 by 18 by 24 tanks suffice. And yes, I have been able to successfully breed the animals multiple years in these setups. But I want the animals to really thrive. And I mean, while they probably are because they're breeding, I think I could be providing them with larger homes. So I will be trying to do that soon. All right, so now I'm going to be showing you guys some of my Europlatus Fantasticus, the satanic leaf tail geckos. So here we have a lovely enclosure that houses two females. 
This is one of my red girls here. She is quite nice. As you can see, she is tailless, but that has no ill effect on her reproducing. Just like crested geckos, Europlatus fantasticus do not grow their tails back if they lose them, whereas some other members of the genus actually do grow them back. You'll notice in here is a very unusually behaving fantasticus. This is Marshmallow, and I mentioned her previously in another video where I collected some eggs. She is a special needs fantasticus that was donated to me as a pet because well, as you can see, she was born with a neurological issue. Fortunately, Marshmallow here does eat, which means that she can sort of lead a happy life. Essentially, I just keep her as a pet. It's kind of sad. She walks around a lot like that, but I mean, she has been living like this for over a year now. So, you know, we're going to give her the best life she can have. She doesn't appear to be in any pain. She just does that sometimes where she walks around in circles and stargazes like a spider ball python or something but otherwise she's uh otherwise she's healthy so that's marshmallow here we have an enclosure that is housing two lovely male grow outs so here we have two Europlatus fantasticus again a really cool gold male who's right here Check out this little guy. Really, really nice. Quite a looker. Peace out, buddy. And this other male is also quite a beautiful specimen. Really nice pattern on this one's body. Hey, buddy. Hey, you want to come up with me? There we go. I'll let him go do his thing. See you later, bud. That's actually his uh, favorite place. He usually goes in that corner and sleeps there. So he knows where he is. All right, so next up we have an awesome tank here with a plumosa fern. A lot of you have been asking what this plant is. It's called a plumosa fern. And there's a creeping ficus on the back wall. Here we have two stunning Adult male, you fantasticus. Hey, buddy. So here's one. Check out the lime spots this guy has on his body. Very, very nice. Again, I want to restate that these animals are not normally in these little cups. They haven't just arrived either. They just go in here while I'm cleaning and maintaining the enclosures. So here he is. Lovely male, you fantasticus. Hey buddy. And then here we have a really, really cool golden male. This color is quite nice. As you can see, this male is very nicely colored. This is an adult male, you fantastic is here. And you can see why these animals have this incredible reputation. Like look at just look at the phenotypic diversity morphologically like they have different tails the pattern the color they're just everything you want in an animal like they're they're really exciting to work with and i'm so thankful that i've been doing quite well with the species and have the pleasure of keeping them so there he goes we, like i said we don't mess around with them too much as much as possible only out of necessity so there he is. Here we have two stunning females. This is their enclosure. Um, they've been laying some eggs. I know this female has. So I will show her to you first. This is a lovely reddish female. She isn't quite fired up, but she has some beautiful pink tones, as you can see, and lovely lichen marks. So we'll let her go off into the enclosure. Bye! There she goes. And I always say, satanic leaf-tailed geckos are super klutzy when it comes to being um, 
handled on a on a hand or a smooth surface but look at the way these animals move through foliage like that's what they're made to do they're small thin agile and their legs just grip each uh, leaf and stem they're really made for moving through uh, thick underbrush and twigs and branches so ficus benjamina is a plant that i strongly recommend to anyone looking to keep this species this is a plant that you want to be growing in the enclosure. It, it really does suit them well. Here is the other female that lives with the one we just let back into the enclosure. She has a very cool pattern. I really love this dorsal pinstripe and I hope that it's something I can replicate. Now I don't mean like intense selective breeding or anything like that. Uh, their natural beauty suffices but Nonetheless, it would be really nice to um, make more like her. And she's a beauty. You are a beautiful animal. So we'll gently give her a nudge and encourage her to come out. There we go. There we are. And at night, they're actually on the ground a lot frolicking. <laughs> frolicking. Uh, going through the leaves on the ground hunting for prey whether it's isopods snails or crickets so yeah those are those two females in this enclosure so i actually have a really big surprise and when i say surprise i mean surprise because i'm not actually going to tell you guys today for this tank and that'll be in a future video in the next few months but right now you could say that there's a pair of spoiled fans that actually get to live in this tank all by themselves and they're sort of test driving the enclosure if you will and I get to see how the two of these animals thrive and enjoy the enclosure and those are these two lovelies so you can see here that we have a beautiful female and male euphantasticus so the female is the more reddish brown one up here and the male is over here so here's the guy there's this lovely male. Hey, buddy. All right, well, he's out of there. And here's the female. And she's a bit on the thinner side because she just laid some duds recently. She got the color under her cheeks. Beautiful, beautiful. Oops. See what I mean about them being a bit more clumsy? They're, they sort of just leap wherever they can. They don't really not always very systematic about where they go but there we go all right so we'll gently leave her be as well and uh there you go but look at how this tank has grown in it's just been doing so nicely and uh yeah we'll, we'll talk a bit about it more in detail in another video i'm uploading soon uh, where I'm going to be asking you guys about if you want to do a Q&A with me. But um, yeah, it's this tank has been doing phenomenal. The video on how to build the enclosure has been doing phenomenal. And I can't thank you guys enough. Okay, next up here we have some more ficus filled planted tanks. And here is a lovely other pair of Euphantasticus. So here is a female. You can see her here, beautiful, uh, sort of like a patternless gray color, quite nice. Hey, oof, and there she goes, we'll gently nudge her to make way back into her home. And the male that she's uh, paired with is probably one of my most stunning representations of a leaf mimicking Euphantasticus. And so I thought maybe combining her patternless appearance with his color might yield some very interesting babies. So as you can see, this is sort of what I was referring to. This guy is crazy looking, um, really, really unique. And yes, they're actually born with it, what we call the tail notching, where it looks like something chewed on their tail and bit a few pieces off. That's actually how they're born, guys. So 
Their, their uh, cryptic mimicry is really quite impressive. So I'm going to gently nudge him out as well. And he'll be on his way too. And if you don't recognize them, these are actually the pair that copulated in the You Fantasticus breeding video, which I can link right up here if you wanted to see that. Let's move along to the next pair. Here we have captive bred pair. This is milk. She's a bit of a funny female. She has very enlarged calcium sacs and she's sort of had these her whole life. I've tried to take it easy with the uh, calcium supplementing, uh, but it doesn't seem to do very much. And they're not hard, so it doesn't seem to be uh, dangerous or harming her in any way. She's just, they don't deplete. And so I just kind of let her do her thing. But yeah, that's milk. She's doing fine, but you can see where they store their calcium is on their right and left side of their neck. And so when you have these large chipmunk-like pouches, those are very large amounts of calcium stored in the body. And it's sort of, well, it's, it's quite unnecessary even for a breeding animal for them to be that large. But they haven't shrunk yet. They may soon. So there's that male. I'll we'll just gently... Take them out. Oops. Here we have another lovely pair. The Fantasticus. This is another tailless female that I acquired. And she's actually a really good breeder. So anyone that says that females that don't have tails can't lay or don't do well, that is false. They make excellent breeders. And here is her Partner in crime, this little stunner. Hey, buddy. Another really nice example of a leaf mimicking you fantasticus. Yep, you guessed it. Down here we've got more fans. This is a sub-adult female grow out. She is stunning. Very, very nice animal. She's been putting on some more weight finally. But check out this girl. Really, really cool. So there's a bit of a better look at her. Very nice. Here we have another lovely pair of Fantasticus. So you kind of figured it. There's a lot of Fantasticus. They're the main animal I keep. Hey buddy, where are you going? Uh uh uh, come back. This guy's quite the looker. Lots of beautiful color on him as well. His, his mate in here is actually rather purple. I can't really see it, but she's actually kind of purple and she is super gravid, as you can also see. So she'll be going straight in now as well. There you go, girl. Come on. in there. There we go. Next we have one of few trios I house together. Um, this is two males and a female. So I was saying, your platus fantasticus are, are very non-aggressive. So males don't really compete for females. They're, they're pretty sweet about that. Look at this guy. He is just, just breathtaking. Hey buddy, you're a looker, aren't ya? So let's get you to come out and say hi. 
and you can go back into the enclosure and this male is sleeping here also very nice you go bud and here is the female that gets to be with them she is very beautiful as you can see she produces some very nice young and actually once we get her back in I wanted to show you guys something look what I found clutch of eggs so we're gonna have to collect those afterwards now moving along to the last side you have the last few remaining animals to show you. So here is a lovely tank planted with some ficus benjamina and a peace lily. And it houses a stunning pair of fantasticus. One of which is the last remaining tailless animal I own. He's one of my favorite males. I don't know what the heck happened. I think the female just decided to have a go at him. But look at that guy. He is a nice boy. So... He's doing just fine. He's just uh, he's become a frog butt. That's what I call them. I call uh, tailless cresties and tailless uh, fans. Any tailless gecko, really. I call them frog butts. So yeah. Oh, all right. See you, dude. But check out this female, guys. What do you think of her? Isn't she quite something? Very very pretty girl. She is quite nice. Yeah, I'm really hoping that she's gravid too, so fingers crossed. I've had this female for two years and she's never laid a good clutch for me once. Sometimes you have to be patient, actually. One of the other females, that tailless red one I showed you, I think I said it in another video, but she's never laid a good clutch for me up until recently, so I'm really excited for her first good clutch to hatch. And I had her for almost three years, so patience hopefully will pay off with her. Schnoozing in here is the last trio I have of fans. So we'll gently unbox them. So these guys have some really beautiful coloration too. From right to left we have the male. One female. She's kind of a nice orange. A really nice chocolatey female here. So... Maybe we'll get her out first. Hey girl. You've been enjoying your nap in here, haven't you? Back home you go. We'll take this other female. Let her out. And lastly, this really nice looking male. He's super like creamy and light colored. He's very unusual. I'm really excited to see what they produce. Um, yeah, he's in two. And they live in this enclosure. So in this tank full of pothos, ficus, and lily, we have banana and oak, one of my only named pair of fantasticus. You know, I love these animals. The fact that I haven't named many of them has nothing to do with me not caring about them. I care about them all immensely. But yeah, this is Banana. You can kind of understand why she's called that. And this is Oak. And I call him Oak because of his tail. It's a very lovely oak-shaped tail. Go ahead, dude. See you later. And also, Banana and Oak are some of my best producers. But Banana hasn't been laying in a little while. However, I noticed... Something else. We have one egg, and I'm not sure if it's actually fertile or not. It doesn't necessarily look fertile, but sometimes eggs that look like that are fertile. I suspect it's a dud, so I think that her next clutch will be really good. Nonetheless, I'm going to collect it and incubate it. So I'm not really sure what happened here, but I lost about two pairs worth of footage, and the files were corrupted. 
So uh, this is one of the females of one of the two pairs that you'll just have to see in another video. And I'm just going to put her away here. So sorry about that, guys. But you'll see those fans again soon. All right, guys. So these are two of my larger female growouts that will be future breeders. Just going to move them somewhere else where you can see. Here is one of them. Very beautiful young female. So we'll gently put her back in her enclosure. Just full of wandering dew and grapevine. And then lastly, I'll get this girl out. This is one of my favorites. Just so you can kind of tell why. Pattern on her is incredible. So, really excited to breed her next year. But, yeah, she's quite a beautiful, you fantastic is. So now we'll gently put her back as well. There we go. So I still, as I was saying, have several other groups of Fantasticus up in there. And I'm not gonna, I mean, I'll show them to you guys another time. It's, I know it may seem like an incomplete room tour, but I'd like to show you guys how I raise the fans up. So. In another video, I'll go through all the bins, all the babies, and show you how they grow up as well. So, before I close and end this video, I wanted to show you guys something. I couldn't help but notice that we have a baby fan hatchling. So this is from red number three female, and the eggs were laid April 14, 2017. So I'm gonna show you guys the little baby that we had emerge from an egg. I also noticed that it appears we had a Europlatus and Kelly also hatch. And that would be a baby that was laid as an egg on January 31st. So that's pretty exciting. And um, yeah, now we'll go ahead and show you both the baby that hatched here and the baby Europlatus Fantasticus. I'm gonna remove this one and put it into a hatchling container. Uh, but look at the amazing markings on this animal. It's gonna be just, oh wow, just a stunning specimen. So yeah, that's very exciting. And here we have a stunning and adorable little Europlatus Henkeli, Henkel's leaf tail gecko. Look at this little beautiful animal. The color on it is just incredible. And the sibling here, you can see the dark mass in the egg. Should be hatching tonight or in the next few days. But yeah, it's a beautiful little Europlatus and Kelly. So we will now put her in her uh, hatchling bin. So yeah, guys, that kind of wraps up today's video. I hope you really enjoyed it. You got to see most of my collection there. Um, yes, sort of in brief, but you saw each enclosure that I housed most of my breeder Fantasticus in, uh, minus the juveniles and babies. But I guess you got to see one or two little hatchlings of each at the end of the video there, and that was really cool. That's one of the fun experiences. And I'm really thankful for the opportunities I have to get to work with these beautiful guys. So, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please drop a like down below. If you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. I hope you enjoy the content. Plenty more videos coming soon in the coming week, actually, let alone every other week anyways. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. Take care and have a wonderful week.